Potens eterni Deus, et mitere digneris, sanctum angelum tuum de celis, qui custodiat, foveat, protegiat, visitat, adque defendat omnes habitantes in hoc habitaculo. Per Christum Dominum nostrum. Oh, sweet, I'm a monster. 
Peccata nostra, ut apti simut sat sacra meseria cerebranda. Confitior Deo Omnipotenti, et provis brandes, quia petami, coditazioni, verbo opere petitioni. Mea culpa, mea culpa, mea culpa, mea culpa, mea culpa. Ideo precoreata, mea culpa, onde santos et santos, et vos fratres, orare pro me, ad Domino Dei nostro. Mese de ator nostri, omnipotens Deus, et misis peccatis nostris, perduca nos ad vitam eternam. Amen.
concede nobis Domine Deus noster, ut te totamente vendremur, et omnes homines rationabili diligamus affectu, per Dominum nostrum, Jesum Christum, Filium tuum, qui te convivit et regnat in unitate Spiritus Sancti, Deus per omnia secula seculorum. prophet Zephaniah. Seek the Lord, all you humble of the earth, who have observed his law. Seek justice, seek humility. Perhaps you may be sheltered on the day of the Lord's anger. But I will leave you as a remnant in your midst, a people humble and lowly, who shall take refuge in the name of the Lord, the remnant of Israel. They shall do no wrong and speak no lies, nor shall there be found in their mouths a deceitful tongue. They shall pasture and couch their flocks, and none to disturb them with, with none to disturb them. Verbum Domini. Lectura de la primera carta del apóstol San Pablo a los Corintios. Hermanos, consideren que entre ustedes, los que han sido llamados por Dios, no hay muchos sabios, ni muchos poderosos, ni muchos nobles, según los criterios humanos. Pues Dios ha elegido a los ignorantes de este mundo para humillar a los sabios, a los débiles del mundo, para avergonzar a los fuertes, a los insignificantes y despreciados del mundo, es decir, a los que no valen nada, para reducir a la nada a los que valen, de manera que nadie pueda presumir delante de Dios. En efecto, por obra de Dios, 
Ustedes están injertados en Cristo Jesús, a quien Dios hizo nuestra sabiduría, nuestra justicia, nuestra santificación y nuestra redención. Por lo tanto, como dice la Escritura, el que se gloría, que se gloríe en el Señor. Verbum Domini. Lectio Sancti Evangelii secundo Matteo. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he had sat down, his disciples came to him. He began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the land. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you and utter every kind of evil against you falsely because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. Verbum Domini. Good afternoon. What a Saturday. How's everyone? ¿Cómo están todos? We just have a couple of announcements. There will be adoration this Friday at 7 p.m. for First Friday. Habrá adoración del Santísimo este viernes a las 7 p.m. para el primer viernes. And our parish desert day is this Wednesday, so there'll be adoration all day in the church, beginning right after the morning mass, and it'll continue until 5.30 in the evening when we'll have solemn vespers and benediction. The full schedule of prayer is in the bulletin and on the website, and if you'd like to cover an hour of prayer, you can sign up at the information booth in the entrance area. Nuestro día de desierto parroquial es este miércoles. Habrá adoración todo el día en la iglesia y comenzaremos las vísperas solemnes y la bendición a las cinco y media de la noche. El horario completo de oración está en el boletín y en el sitio web. Y si quieren um, inscribirse para um, cubrir una hora de adoración, pueden inscribirse en, en el puesto de información. We also have uh, Youth Junior and Children's Oratory tonight at 7 p.m. También tenemos los grupos del Oratorio para los Niños esta noche a las 7 p.m. 
And uh, beloved, our marriage enrichment group for Catholic couples will begin again on Friday, February 17th from 6 to around 9 p.m. in St. Crispin House. This group is a time of friendship, prayer, private sharing as a couple, and learning about the gift of marriage. If you and your spouse are interested, you can sign up on the website. There's an email to send to. And then next week in the, um, in the bulletin, that information will be there as well. Es el grupo de, uh, para las parejas para um, crecer en, en amor en sus matrimonios es inglés, pero vamos a empezar un grupo para las parejas, um, un grupo en español, en una semana. Sí, de hecho, uh, Carlos y su esposa uh, estarán encargados de este grupo. Entonces, anunciaremos este grupo, creo que en dos o tres semanas. Sí, dos, en, dos o tres semanas. Um, and then finally, we also need more help with the information booth after the masses in English. If you're interested, please let us know. In 1969, Father Joseph Ratzinger, who would become the future Pope Benedict XVI, gave a talk about the future of the church. And at the end of that talk, he suggested that the church in the near future would become small and would, to a great extent, have to start over again in the with the imprint that she had in society. He was criticized a lot for being very pessimistic in this speech that he gave when there was so much optimism in the church. You have to remember the Second Vatican Council had just taken place, so there was, a, there was like an energy in the air that there was a great renewal that was about to take place within the church. And we do know that God laid the seeds in that council for the renewal that he would bring about in his church. But Ratzinger, in making that statement, was being prophetic in that moment because he wasn't fooled by the appearance of the waters on the surface. On the surface, the churches were full, had many buildings and a large institutional footprint. But if you looked beneath the surface of the waters like Ratzinger did, you could see the coming riptide that was about to pull things out to sea and pull them apart. And this, in fact, was one of the graces of the Holy Spirit to the church in calling the Second Vatican Council to prepare us for that moment and give us the tools that we needed for renewal and picking things up again. 1969 was a turning point in society and the church. There were many revolutionary ideas and movements at that time which would soon be put into practice on a large scale and send society and the church in, in the Western, in, especially in Western society, on a free fall that we're still experiencing today. Declining numbers of mass attendance, baptisms, marriages, priests and religious, the closing of churches and the selling of schools, hospitals, and other buildings that once used to be run by the church in abundance. That is just a sliver of the effects of that moment, a moment that had many causes, which we won't speak about today, but many causes leading to it. Well, Ratzinger's prediction, we know, came true. And even though his prediction surprised a lot of people at the time, what he said wasn't a novel idea. The prophet Zephaniah, who we heard in the first reading, said pretty much the same thing in the seventh century BC. Josiah was king of Judah at the time, and there was much hope surrounded by this, around this king amongst the people of God, because they had gone through some difficult kings and had some different, difficult moments in their history. He seemed to be the one who was turning things around and rebuilding the people and their kingdom. Well, it was in that moment that Zephaniah spoke about the people of God being reduced to a small number compared to its present size. As you can imagine, no one in Zephaniah's time liked hearing that prophecy, but they certainly remembered it when it came to pass. Why would God allow either of these things to happen? God's plans are mysterious, but he has shown us some things about himself that help to make sense of this. God is not a God of numbers. He doesn't like just counting people for counting stake. He's the God who leaves the 99 sheep to go after the one who's gone astray. He sends his church to all the nations and he desires that everyone come to know him, love him, and so be saved. But what matters most to God isn't just full pews for the sake of having full churches, but hearts full of love for him. God wants a people that freely belong to him and his family, that are interiorly convicted by faith 
and that are committed to him and their neighbor in generous love. He doesn't want anyone to feel forced into a relationship with him who doesn't want it. He's too much of a gentleman. And so for that reason, if someone wants to walk away from him, he lets them go freely because he loves them that much. He doesn't want them to be living a lie, saying one thing but believing or doing something different. But we have to be careful about this idea of what we know happened with the prophet Zephaniah and what Ratzinger predicted as we're, and we're experiencing now of the church getting smaller. Some hear of the idea of a small number of faithful who remain and begin thinking of some kind of elite club that closes the doors to everyone who doesn't belong, that puts up barriers and thinks we have to hunker down, all of us, the good ones. That's the last thing God wants for his church. In fact, God never wants that for his church. It's more like this. Imagine you've been pulled far out into the ocean by that riptide. You don't have enough strength to swim against it. And once it pulls you far out enough and leaves you there, you don't have enough strength to swim back to shore either. But if you can't find something quick, you're gonna drown. There you find a life raft coming to your rescue and it saves you from drowning. That's what God offers us in his church. That's what he gives to us in his church in the world. It's what keeps us from drowning. All of us need the grace of his healing and holiness that comes to us through his church to keep our head above the waters. And if it weren't for his life raft that he gives us, we wouldn't be able to make it. Now, wouldn't it be true that if we made it into that raft and saw others around us who were just in the same, who were in the same situation that we just were, wouldn't we do everything that we could to get them to safety together with us? Of course we would. That's what God wants us to do today. With humility to call others who are drowning like we were and show them that we're just as weak as they are, but we've found healing, redemption, and renewal in our relationship with God and his church. And this is actually the second half of what Ratzinger predicted back in that time he gave the speech. He said, after a time of testing, an internalized and simplified church will radiate great power and influence, for the population of the world are going to be inexpressibly lonely, and they'll then discover the little community of believers as something quite new, as a hope that is there for them, as the answer they have secretly always been asking for. The community of believers may get smaller, but it's not meant to stay that way. As we grow in our faith, we're called to invite others into the faith just as someone did for us. But we can't wait for them to discover the faith. We need to go out to them, to paddle over to them and extend a hand to them so that amid the turbulent waters of this world, they can climb up into the refuge we found in Christ and his church. So let us strengthen one another in faith and together with God, bring our brothers and sisters home. En 1969, el padre José Ratzinger, el futuro Benedicto XVI, pronosticó que en el futuro la iglesia se haría más pequeña. Y vemos eso hoy en la disminución del número de católicos y el cierre de las iglesias. Sorprendió a la gente cuando dijo esto, pero su predicción fue básicamente la misma que la del profeta Sofonías que leemos hoy. Dios permite que suceda algo así porque quiere un pueblo que le pertenezca libremente a él y a su familia. Un pueblo interiormente convencido por la fe y comprometido con él y con el prójimo en un amor generoso. Y si hay alguien que no quiere ese tipo de re relación con él, él le da la libertad de irse. De lo contrario, nunca podríamos amarlo porque estamos siendo forzados. Pero esta iglesia más pequeña no significa que la iglesia se convierta en un club de élite con las puertas cerradas para todos los que no pertenecen. 
Más bien significa una iglesia más pequeña cuyos miembros se dan cuenta más profundamente de cuán débiles son y cuánto necesitan de Dios y cuánto necesitan invitar a otros a descubrir por primera vez o redescubrir la sanación y la redención de la misericordia y gracia de Dios. La comunidad de creyentes puede reducirse, pero no está destinada a permanecer así. Entonces, fortalezcámonos unos a otros en la fe, y junto con Dios, traigamos a casa a nuestros hermanos y hermanas.
fratres und meam aquestrum sacrificium acceptabili fiat apodeum patrem omnipotentem. Altaribus tuis domine unra nostre servitutis inferimus, que placatus assumens sacramentum nostre redemptionis efficias, per Christum dominum nostrum. Amen. Dominus subescum, sorsum corda, gratia segamus Domino Deo nostro. Vere dignum et est tibi gratias agere, vere justum est te glorificare pater sancte, quia unus est Deus vivus et verus, quies ante secula et permanens in eternum, in accessibilem lucem in habitans, Sedet qui unus bonus atque fons vitae cuncta fecisti, ut creaturas tuas benedictionibus ad empleres, multasque letificares tui luminis claritate, et ideo coram te enumere astant turbe angelorum, qui die ac nocte servium tibi, et vultus tui gloriam contemplantes, te incessanter glorificant, cum quibus et nos et per nostram vocem, omnis que sub celo es creatura, nomen tuum in exultatione confitemur tanentes. Pater Sancte, quia magnus es et omnia opera tua, in sapientia et caritate fecisti, omnum ad tuam imaginem condristi, eique comesisti mundi curam universi, ut tibi soli creatori serviens, creaturus omnibus imperaret, et cum amiciciam tuam non obediens amisiset, non eum de reliquisti in mortis imperio, Omnibus enum misericorditer subvenisti, ut te querentis inveniret, sed et fodere pluries ominibus obtuluisti, eosque per profetas erudisti in expectatione salutis, et sic pater sancte mundum dilexisti, ut completa plenitudine temporum, unigenitum tuum nobis mitere salvatorum, qui incarnatus de Spiritus Sancto et natus ex Maria Virgine, in nostra condiciones forma es conversatus per omnia absque peccato, salutem evangelis savit pauperibus, redemptionem captivis, maestis corde letitiam, 
ut tuam vero dispensationem impleret in mortem tradit semitipsum, acre surgens a mortuis, mortem destruxit vitamque renovavit, et ut non amplius nobis, nobis metipsus viveremus, sed sibi qui pro nobis mortuos es atque surexit, a te pater misit spiritum sanctum primitias credentibus, qui opus suum in mundo perficiens omnem sanctificationem compleret. Quesimus igitur Domine, et idem ut idem spiritus sanctus, et mundra sanctificare dignetur, ut corpus et sanguis fiant, Domine nostri, Jesu Christi, ad hoc magnum mysterium cerebrandum, quod ipse nobis reliquit in fedus eternum. Ipse enum cum ora veniset, ut glorificaretur a te pater sancte, ac dilexisit suos qui erant in mundo, in finem dilexit eus, et cenantibus ilis, accepit panem, benedixit, benedixit ac fregit, delique discipuli suis dicens. Accipite manducate ex hoc omnes, hoc est enem corpus meum, quod provobis tradetur. Simili modo accipiens calicem, ex genimine vitis repletum, gratias egit, dedicque discipuli suis dicens. Accipite et vivite ex eo omnis, ic est enim calic sanguinis mei, novi et eterni testamenti, qui probobis et promutis effundetur in remissionem peccatorum, hoc facite et meam commemorationem. Mysterium Fidei Memoriale nunc celebrantes, 
mortem Christi, eius quae descensum ad infros recolimus, eius resurrectionem et ascensionem ad tuam dextram profitemur, ed expectantis ipsius adventum in gloria, offerimus tibi eius corpus et sanguinum, sacrificium tibi acceptabili et toti mundo salutare. Respice, Domine, in ostiam, quam ecclesiae tue ipse parasti, et concede benignus omnibus, qui ex hoc uno pane participabunt et calice, ut in unum corpus et sancto spiritu congregati, in Christo ostia viva perficiantur ad laudem gloriae tue, nunc ergo, Domine, omnium recordare, proquibus tibi anc oblationem offerimus, in primis famuli tui, Pape nostre Francisci, Episcopi, Episcopi nostri Davidi et Episcoporum Ordinis Universi, sed et totius cleri et offerentium et circumstantium et cuncti populi tui, et omnium qui te querunt corde sincerum, memento etiam illorum qui obierunt in pace Christi tui, et omnium defunctorum, quorum fidem tu solos cognovisti, nobis omnibus filiis tuis clemens pater concede, ut celestem ereditatem consequi valiamus, cum beata virgine dei genetrice Mariae, cum beato Iosef eo sponso, cum apostolis et sanctis tuis, in regno tuo, ubi cum universa creatura, a corruptione peccati et mortis liberata, te glorificemus per Christum Dominum nostrum, per quem mundo bona cuncta lagiris. Per ipsum et cum ipso et in ipso, esti video Padre Omnipotenti, in unitate Spiritus Sancti, omnis honore gloria per omnia secula seculorum. Precepti salutaribus muniti et divine institutioni formati avemus dicere. Pater noster, qui es in cedis, sanctifice tuono. da propitius pacem in diebus nostris, ut ope misericordiae tui adiuti, et a peccatus simus semper liberi, et ab omni perturbatione securi, expectantis beatem spem, et adventum salvatoris nostri Iesu Christi. Quia tuum est Domine Iesu Christi, quid existi apostolis tuis, Pacem relinquo vobis, pacem meam do vobis, ne respicias peccata nostra, sed fidem ecclesiae tue, e amque succundum voluntatem tuam, pacificare e coadunare regneris, qui vivis et regnas in secula seculorum. Amen. Pax Domini sit semper vobiscum. Et
Ecce agnus Dei, ecce qui tolent peccata mundi, beati qui ad genum agni vocati sunt, Domine non sunt dignus, ure in tres sub tecto in meo, sed tantum di verbo et sanavitur anima mea. Thank you. 
Oremos. Redemptionis nostre mundane vegetati presumus Domine, ut hoc perpetue salutis auxilio, fide semper vera proficiat, per Christum Dominum nostrum. Amen. Dominus obescum et con Benedicat vos omnipotens Deus, Pater et Filius et Spiritus Sanctus. Amen. Amen. Ite misa est. Deo Deo. Deo.